Hello, my name's Sarah Shaw, and I'm one of the founders and the Chief Investment Officer of 4D Infrastructure, a dedicated global listed infrastructure fund launched in 2016. I thank you for the opportunity to introduce you to 4D and hopefully outline what we believe is a very significant and exciting investment opportunity in global listed infrastructure. 4D believe that the combination of infrastructure's defensive investment attributes, coupled with a huge and growing need for infrastructure investment globally, as well as the diverse nature of assets within the infrastructure universe, will see infrastructure as an asset class as a fantastic investment opportunity for decades to come. With active management, an infrastructure portfolio can be positioned to take advantage of the long-term structural opportunity set, as well as whatever cyclical events the future throws at us, whether they be environmental, political, economic, or COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic has pushed the international economy into recession and hit equity markets hard. Listed infrastructure has not been immune to this sell-off. However, it is important to note that infrastructure is a very long duration asset with a five to 10 year investment horizon. Indeed, as the world economy returns to a more stable environment, infrastructure in all its forms will be essential to the recovery. There is no global growth recovery without ports and airports, roads and rail, pipelines, power transmission networks and communication infrastructure. In this video, I hope to highlight what the long-term infrastructure investment opportunity is, as well as touch on how you can position infrastructure for the imminent concerns of COVID-19. But first, very simply, what is infrastructure? Put simply, infrastructure provides the basic services essential for communities to function and economies to prosper and grow. For 4D, this equates to the listed owners and operators of essential services, being your regulated utilities in the gas, power and water space, and user pay assets such as toll roads, airports, ports and rails, where the user pays for the service. All of these assets are characterised by monopolistic market positions or ones with high barriers to entry. Their earnings are underpinned by contract or regulation. These are very long dated assets with high upfront capital cost and then very low maintenance spend. They have a largely fixed operating cost base and they have inflation hedges. Everything that comes together to provide you with long-term visible and resilient earning streams, which underpin a yield or growth. It's because of these characteristics that infrastructure is known as a defensive asset class with lower volatility of earnings and a higher yield than broader equities. While COVID-19 has put near-term pressure on earnings of assets such as airport, it is important to note that the infrastructure asset class as a whole is proving the defensiveness of these earnings. Infrastructure offers you this defensiveness with significant potential growth upside as a result of a huge and growing need of infrastructure investment globally. By 2030, the B20 estimate that an additional 60 to 70 trillion US dollars of infrastructure capacity will be needed globally. This is as a result of decades of underinvestment and the changing dynamics of our global population. To put this in perspective, there has been a chronic underspend on critical infrastructure in virtually every nation over the past 30 years, if not longer. This is because governments have had other spending priorities. During the GFC, they were focused on bailing out the banking system, not on replacing water mains. During COVID-19, the priority is social security, not replacing collapsing bridges. However, the infrastructure need is now critical. To put this in perspective, over 50% of London's water mains are over 100 years old. The 2018 Genoa bridge collapse in Italy highlighted the age of much of the European transport infrastructure. It was a mere 51 years old. In the US, over 80% of water pipes are over 30 years old. Some are over 100 years old. We are talking about wooden water pipes still being used by the global superpower to service its community's water needs. These photos are all examples of developed market infrastructure in dire need of replacement. The second driver of the need for infrastructure investment is quite simply population growth. In 1900, we had a global population of 1.65 billion people. By 2000, that had grown to 6.1 billion. Keeping in mind, we're still using infrastructure put in place to service that 1.65 billion. By the turn of the next century, we're expecting a global population of 11 billion people, underpinning the need for even more investment. We first must play catch up, and then we need to invest for future generations. 
This population growth has also created some environmental or climatic uh, issues that underpin even more infrastructure investment if we're going to sustain this planet that we all rely on. To that end, renewable energy, coal to gas transition are thematics that we are investing in. The final driver of the need for infrastructure investment is the emergence of the middle class in developing economies, which is driving the in-country domestic demand story as well as the global need for infrastructure. The emerging market economies are expected to grow rapidly over the next 30 years, changing the world economic order that has been in place for much of the post-World War II era. This will be driven by the evolution of the middle class. And considering the size of the middle class in emerging markets, China, India and Indonesia account for 40% of the global population, changing in their spending patterns is going to have huge ramifications for investment opportunities. Taking it from an individual standpoint, as your wealth increase, your spending patterns inevitably change. This starts with a desire for three meals a day. It then moves to a demand for basic essential services, such as clean water, indoor plumbing, gas for cooking, heating, power. With power comes the desire for white goods, or, uh, such as a fridge or a TV. This is more consumption and also a demand for logistics change and ports. This is infrastructure. Over time, it moves to improve your quality of life uh, and, and improve efficiency. I want new roads to drive my scooter or, ro or car on. I want airports to expand my horizon. Importantly, one of the clear and early winners of the emergence of the middle class is infrastructure, which is needed to drive the evolution. When you put these factors together, the developed market replacement spend, the population growth, energy transition and the emergence of the middle class, what is clear is the need for infrastructure investment. What is also clear is that governments who traditionally provide this cannot fully fund it. So this represents a significant opportunity for private sector capital. And this opportunity has only been enhanced by COVID-19. With increasing demands on public sector budgets, the government is going to apply, rely even more on private sector capital. And given infrastructure is going to be a key stimulus measure, this investment is all likelihood going to be fast-tracked. So I have touched on the, the defensive characteristics and the huge investment opportunity of the asset class. These, coupled with the diverse nature of the assets within the infrastructure universe, create the perfect storm for infrastructure outperformance. Despite infrastructure all sharing the defensive characteristics discussed, diversity of subsector and regions allows you to actively manage a portfolio for all points of an economic cycle. The infrastructure universe contains two very economically distinct and diverse subsectors. On the one hand, the essential services. These assets are immune to economic shifts, both up and down, as a function of them being a basic need, as well as the structure of their regulatory environment, which, re which measures returns independent of volumes. These are a very attractive overweight position in depressed economic environments, as you will get earnings growth and yield support, even when GDP growth is minus 7%. By contrast, user pay earnings are not fixed, as is a common misconception, but rather have a very positive and direct correlation to GDP growth with inflation protection. These are the assets you want to be exposed to in growth or inflationary environments, or at the point of an economic recovery. While we believe a balanced portfolio is optimal, you can actively manage between these two subsectors to smooth the volatility of equity market investment. Infrastructure is also truly global. This allows you to access in-country economic profiles and domestic demand stories. With the weak economic environment globally, certain regions and countries are offering better relatively value and you can position for this. So our contention is if you put these three factors together, infrastructure offers an incredible investment opportunity for decades. You have defensiveness with growth and you have a, an ability to position for all stages of the economic cycle. In depressed economic environments, go overweight the utilities, which will give you earnings resilience and yield. In the recovery phase, go overweight those correlated to growth, but with inflation protection. So how is 4D capitalising on the infrastructure opportunity? Our philosophy is very simple. We aim to give investors access to the best opportunities globally within the listed infrastructure space, considering where we are sitting in the economic cycle. To break that down, we are truly global. We invest in both the developed markets and the emerging markets and think they are both very important. We are index agnostic. We fundamentally don't believe in relative investing. We want to give you the best ideas globally, not the relatively best ideas. 
and we are active managers. We truly believe that with active management, you can position for the long-term structural opportunity set, as well as whatever cyclical events come our way. So to wrap up, 4D truly believe that the combination of the very attractive fundamentals, the huge growth opportunity longer term, as well as the COVID-19 response in terms of fiscal and monetary stimulus, and the currently very attractive entry prices for listed infrastructure stocks has created a very unique buying opportunity in the listed infrastructure space. As mentioned at the outset, we don't believe there is any global growth recovery without infrastructure playing an essential role, and 4D are looking to be part of that. Thank you for watching.